Hey everyone, Bootstrap 5 has some beautiful components out of the box. In this video, we will look at this carousel slider. It has these images in the background and you can uh, flip between them with these controls. And then we also have these indicators to see which one we are currently looking at. And the text and the button are actually captions of this carousel. So if you want to see how you can use this, how you can implement this, make sure you watch all the way to the end. Okay, so I have opened up my code editor and I've created a simple project here, just an HTML file, which is also linking to a custom style sheet here because, you know, with Bootstrap, sometimes you have to write some custom styles, right? For now, it's empty. We want to create this... Um, uh, carousel now this is a more complicated component right so bootstrap gives you components out of the box like a button but a button is easy to create from scratch these more complicated components like a nav bar or a carousel or uh, a modal right cart accordion component all of these bigger components it's easier if you just go to the documentation and just copy their examples and then modify it to get exactly what you want right because you're not going to remember all of the classes that you need for a bigger component like that right so that's what i would do in the real world so let's actually do that here as well now be careful when you google for bootstrap docs because you're going to get older versions right so here the first link is actually linking to 4.1 right and this one is actually 5.0 and i'm actually looking for 5.2 right when you're watching this video you may already have like a newer version that doesn't matter because it will stay the same for the most part um, but make sure you get the version number that uh, you're using so then here you can see all of their components that you get out of the box right so a nav bar um carousel i would definitely just go to the docs and just copy their example right so here they have examples and usually they have like a basic example, so we can we can start there. So I would just copy this, right? And then I can just paste it here. I'm already linking to the Bootstrap uh, libraries, right? Both CSS and JavaScript. So when we do that, nothing. Uh, we don't see anything yet. Well, except this uh, icon here for an image that cannot be displayed because it's linking to a source that does not exist. So let, we might as well just use the uh, actual images uh, right off the bat. So I'm just going to copy that from my notes here. Okay, so I have copied in the images and if we look at the structures to see what we have so far. So we have this div which holds everything and you can see in the background it was already going to the next one, right? So that uh, functionality of displaying the various images or items, right? Carousel items is what they're called. That's already working. So at least one of the carousel items needs to have the active class or it won't work. So by default, that's the first one that's going to be um, with which it starts, right? So when I load the page, this is the active one. It also has an ID and this is necessary because we're going to have some elements that can be clicked and uh, Bootstrap is going to do something when there is a click, but it needs to know which uh, carousel something should be done for because we could, we could technically have multiple carousels on the page, right? So here we could call this something like hero carousel because it was in the hero section. Okay, so uh, this is a very basic um, carousel now the obvious problem right now is that the images are way too big right their height is not constrained so you need to do that yourself right so this is one of the th one of those things that bootstrap does not do for you you have to do it yourself so we need to write some custom styles so we need to style both the item as well as the individual image so i like to give them their own custom class so that we're not interfering with the uh, styles of bootstrap so I'm going to give each item a class of C item and each image, right? These are bootstrap classes, but now we're going to add our own class C image. Okay. Okay. So then we can constrain their height. Their image, the images are sitting in item. So we can say that, that each item should be, let's say 480 pixels tall. And when we do that, you can already see that something changed. Right, but the images are still um, as tall as before. It's just that they're getting cut off now. So what we can do is we can say images, you should be 100% of your parent element, right? So then their height will actually be that. Now, when you work with images and you start changing their heights and widths, often they become distorted because you're, you're sort of changing the uh, aspect ratio, right? So there is a property here called object fit that you usually want to use when you start playing around with heights and width of images. If you set it to cover, um, 
it will look good again, right? So their their dimensions are gonna be um, like their aspect ratio of the image will match the aspect ratio of the area in which you're placing them, right? So it, it will do that by cutting off part of the image. Okay. Now uh, here in the example, they're a little bit darker than here, right? So we can also do that with CSS, right? So Bootstrap does not cover everything. As you can see here with filter brightness as well, we're still writing quite a few custom styles. So it's very important that you understand and have mastered CSS itself. So check out my professional CSS course. The link is in the description because that's exactly what you will learn, right? Especially things like Flexbox, by the way, right? So you can easily learn filter brightness, but there are more complicated things like layouts. Okay, so uh, this is already looking uh, pretty good. So now um, we want these back and forth buttons. So let's see how they do that. So that's, this is how I would do it in the real world. So now I want something with controls, right? That's called controls. Those are these things. And you can see the extra elements that they add. And usually you can just copy and paste it and it will immediately work, right? So these two buttons, I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them below the carousel inner. Let's see, yeah, below the carousel inner. And I think that should already work. Oh, probably not because it needs to match the ID of the hero of this one, right? So here they, they're using data attributes because when you click on the button, they need to know, okay, so you want to go to the previous or next slide, but of which carousel? So here we have to select this one, right? So we have to say hero carousel. Okay, let's check it out. Okay. Okay, so that was very easy. So now let's try adding um, these indicators. And that's actually the next part. So indicators, um, we can already see is right here. So I would copy this, right? So you're not, you're not gonna remember all of these classes by yourself, like carousel, carousel indicators, carousel inner, right? So you have to open up the docs and uh, just copy and paste some stuff. So I'm just going to paste it right here on top uh, or uh, above uh, Carousel Inner. And then we have these um, uh, indicators. Now we should be able to click on them as well. And that doesn't work because I think we still need to uh, use the Hero Carousel idea. Yeah. Right. So pay attention to these uh, data attributes. And so now I have live server, by the way. So every time I make a change, it automatically updates the page, right? So I don't need to refresh. It, it will automatically do that for me, right? So now when we click on this, it works, right? So this is already looking pretty good. And this is, uh, you know, you may not want everything here, but I'm just showing you this. I think these indicators look pretty cool, but um, maybe that's not your thing. So now let's continue with the last part. These are actually the captions. So you can have a caption, basically like a description of the image. Um, and they make it very easy to do that. Now in the example here with captions, they have like a smaller, um, you know, some smaller text here, more like details. Here I was actually using it as, you know, a bigger text as and really drawing attention to it with a button in there as well. And you can do that, right? So you have, right, so each item can have like a description. So it's so if you go in the carousel item, there should be something with captions. Yeah, so here we have caption, right? Here we have the image in the item. We already have that. Now we want these captions. So I would just copy this. I would go in the carousel items and paste it right here. We'll do it for the first one first. And then we have this caption. Right, so then we can style this to make it bigger and more uh, and add a button, um, but it's basically just a caption. So very quickly, I will style this with some bootstrap uh, classes. I actually don't want this to be an H5 because it's not going to be a heading. It's just going to be some text. Discover the hidden world. And then here we have the actual heading, the Aurora Tours. This is going to be an H1 because it's going to be the most important heading on the page. And then we also have that button. I will give it a class of BTN and then also BTN primary. Book a tour. Okay, so then we have this. And now we need to make this bigger and we need to position it more upwards. So with carousel caption, the entire caption should move upwards. Uh, what we can use is one of those uh, offsets. 
So if you had, these are positioned absolute, so you can use top zero and it will set zero pixels from the top. Well, there's going to be some space, but we, that's how you can get it up here. And then we can simply add uh, some margin on the top so that it sits a little bit lower, right? And then we can go to the element below there and we can add some more margin on the top so it's positioned even more, even lower. Um, and we can change the font size of this one, font size to three. And it should be uppercase. So we have a utility class for that, uppercase. And let's see, so then the H1 should be much bigger. We have a display class for that. The font weight should be bolder and the text should be capitalized. Okay, and then the button, let's see, the button should get padding on the horizontal axis on both sides. So you say PX4, vertically as well, but a little bit le uh, less. So we say PY2, the font size in here should be 5, and there should be some margin on the top, right? So then let's see, let's compare, it looks the same. Yeah, it looks the same, right? So very easy to do, very quickly to do with Bootstrap. If you had to do this with, with normal HTML and CSS, yeah, that would be uh, a lot of work, right? I will quickly do the other captions as well for the other parts here. I will just copy it for my example here because it's the exact same. Okay, so I copied it from the example because it's the exact same. Um, and that's how this will look, right? Now here, here I was actually... Um, using a modal, right? So if you click on it, it actually opens a modal. If you want to learn about that, I have a whole uh, crash course here on my YouTube, which will teach you all about Bootstrap 5. Check it out. By the way, you do have to pay attention to responsiveness. So if we look at the first slide here, you can see that um, the carousel keeps looking good, but the captions, they do get removed after some time. And I, actually, because I copied these over, that doesn't happen for the other ones because I already changed that. And uh, this is actually what we want. They should they should they should stay here. They should not they should not disappear. The reason for that is if we look at that first uh, carousel item or and then the caption, so they include these two classes by default. So that means display none, right? And then right and since Bootstrap is mobile first, it means on mobile on mobile devices it's not going to be displayed. And then from medium sizes and onwards and bigger, it's going to be display block basically undoing the display none, right? So it's only going to be displayed now on wider devices, right? On medium and above, right? If we always want it to be displayed, we can just remove these two classes. And now when we, when we, uh, yeah, when we pay attention to the first slide, it will, it will stay here, right? And by the way, if you were wondering in uh, what I copied here, these are for the model, right? So these data attributes here for this button, and this one as well, this is all necessary to um, open it up like this, right? We're not using that here, but maybe you were wondering about that. Well, then check out that whole crash course video. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.